So you already have met uh, Devajyoti Da from Calcutta, which is also where I come from, Kolkata, and Piplu Khan, who's the director, as you know, and Radwan Siddiq, who's the producer of the film, and also, as all of you know, a close member of the family. Um, it's um, quite difficult to start a discussion immediately after a film which um, is very moving and touching in its impact. Uh, it's a very, very human story. Um, and I don't think anybody here can feel untouched by the kind of um, tragedy that uh, a one particular family had to cope with and, and deal with and uh, somehow find a way of moving beyond. So um, I, would, I think that what would be really interesting to know about this movie is a little peek into the kind of creative process that went into it, the kind of thinking. I believe that we are today standing almost exactly a year after the movie was released. That's right, 10th November last year. So it's been a year already and the movie has been in the public domain. So as the director and as a producer, how have you felt about um, this film now that you see it and, uh, in the open? How is it being taken? And do you still feel the way you did when you set out to make the film? Would you like to take the mic? Uh, I think uh, I think Bobby Bay should start like you know, give me a notes because I'm probably a first time having him in any sort of discussions in public. We had his amazing collaborations of five years. But I never had uh, him uh, like you know on stage or in public space. So I think he can start. Then we can like you know okay. add on. So would you like to talk about? Thanks. Yeah. Um, thanks, Litfest, for having us, and thanks for the thanks to the audience for turning up. We were talking about how this is almost like a anniversary party for us. Uh, it's hard to believe that it's been a year. I still remember the day very well when we when we had the premiere and. You know, when you put in six years of blood, sweat, tears, emotion into a project like this, your initial kind of goals are quite small. So, you know, we, we watched it, we liked it, but initially when you, when you release something like this, you're thinking, we hope people turn up, you know, <laughs> like we hope they're going to watch it, we hope they're going to like it. And I have to say, um, a year on, I, I feel like we, people did, Go to watch it. We're really grateful for that. We're thankful for a lot of the feedback we've received. People told us many things like, you know, we didn't know this story that well. We, we, we've never seen the prime minister in this light. And um, people and his team and they were there with the music and the cinematography. It was, it was, it was really great. It was a great experience to, to, um, to have the opportunity to, to make this. Um, I think people who I probably won't elaborate on how difficult a producer I am to work on because he's, he's far too much of a gentleman. But I think we, it worked out well in the end. What, how do you feel? I think it's a very strange occasion. So I like, because it's an anniversary. And I actually, I'm, I'm, I just landed this morning, so I'm just not keeping well. So my voice is like a little broken. I'll try to articulate my thoughts. Uh, we had a screening in Barcelona. I just landed. But I'm trying to say uh, this is a very strange occasion and also feeling like because you moved on. We made like you know, one year back and you had I saw probably a hundred times. But today again I watched it like and uh, I made sure that uh, credit line goes till the end because we have a very special moments in the credit lines not because of any names and all. There are like certain notes we discovered in the process of making music. Uh, imagine that uh, last 12 minutes of the graphic section, the investments of music and the kind of rush and crazy days we had. That is one of memories I can talk about an hour. I was going to come to draw in Devuda into the discussion a little later yeah. because I just thought that since the process began in the mind of the producer and then the director and uh, the producer must have sat and thought about what they wanted this film to be. 
So um, when you were when you were envisaging it, what did you think that you wanted to make? Like, what was the was there a sort of vision uh, that you had? Could you talk about that? What kind of film did you want? And once the film is ready, do you feel that you got what you got where you wanted to go? So um, along with uh, my co-producer Nasul Hamid Bipu, who's also in the in the front row here, and without him, this this whole project wouldn't have been possible. We've been talking about it for many many years because I think. For me, as a, as a family member, I'm very privileged to see the Prime Minister from close quarters, but when I'm with her, she's, she's my aunt. And she's slightly more than my aunt because you know, after the tragic events of August 15, 1975, she kind of became, she was my grandmother, my grandfather, my uncles, all the family members that I never got to meet, it was, it was her and she always represented that. And we're very close and you know you get a glimpse of what she's like as a person very loving uh, great sense of humor always has time for the family and so for me it was just like we'd see her on television and i would say most of the people who see her would see her in sort of battle mode you know if i can use sort of video game language here official events, awards, speeches, and, and I felt like the way we, we portray our leaders or, or even our history is it's very officious. And um, there's a lot of focus on getting a lot of information across, but not always a focus on the storytelling. So I thought, you know, this would be, this would be interesting. Can we do it? Can we actually really get her to agree to, to let the cameras into places where, and, and to get her to relax and talk, we had to sort of go into places where she's not used to having cameras. So uh, in her library, in her study, in her, in her living room, in her kitchen, all of these places. So we, um, th that was kind of just the very sort of uh, vague idea which we sat down with people who and, and started discussing. And then he had, the very difficult job of turning this into an actual uh, production. Uh, I think I think this is like on a very surface level. That's the way you see movies and all. But for me, I think the critical structure was. I'm very inclined to like you know anything like a history, past, and as an elements of drama, things like that. So when I got this opportunity to do something interesting, I thought how to get in structures of disruptions where you crack the idea of like, you know, oh, this cannot be boring, this can be interesting. Yes. My background is in advertising and all. Actually, this is something very theoretically. So I have this tendency of like, you know, putting put a narrations in pen and papers. So me and my colleague, one of these youngest colleagues in my room, so like in my office, after having one year of pilot, we had this idea of imagine like, you know, break down 20 chapters, like you're writing a book, you have the only title, but you don't have the content, for example. If you look at the song titles, these are the thought, like Exile in Delhi, the Tungi Para Blues. So for example, when I made the Vajati Fast, with some theme in clip and five page of one structure, it is very difficult to understand what this director wants. So we put co complex structures, now going to that craft, but my one liner for this, this is my tribute to my understanding of this complex politics in this Delta. We having like, I grew up with so many narratives and all. Then I realized in, at one point of life at 40s, like you should have understanding of your own and you try to probably portray a truth which you believe in. And it's very subjective, like, you know, so I fabricate the truth that I believe in, like, you know, so this is, the way I want to see a portions of Bangladesh history where the most dramatic things happened with the family. They are the inception. They are the like, kind of responsible to giving us kind of a, giving us kind of a, this country. And, but I always had this idea of like, you know, this whole in my school days, all this hegemony on Joy Bangla, these and that. There is like, you know, keep changing of narratives and all. I had this idea of what is happening. Why this country is not having one story. So when I visited first time 32 number house after got the commissioning, we kept visiting for six months to take notes. I can tell you two incidents, how we got the films. 
we got like you know she said one uh, in one interview to give her is the most beautiful girl, like a place in the world when i ended landed at my cinematographer is the most eccentric guy to work with he said hey brother there is nothing beautiful they sorry hey brother there is nothing beautiful oh. cinematographer i said okay let's wait next year we went and incidentally it was raining he said this is amazing then we realized in the interview this inclination to bangabandhu and sheikh uh, hasina and the tragic things happened there were like always the rain as a backdrop and if we see this is a delta so we took a sense of water and rain as a metaphor so we made sure we shot over the five years only rain and rain rain and these guys are centric like for example we shot 14 days entire 32 locked full given all possibilities of support we just smoked up the entire building full day so people is even difficult to open your eyes and flickering lights and we shot that and sadik said i gave immortality to shahuddin's painting ask him to pay us <laughs> so these are the kind of collaboration and after that 14 days we came out for a break me and sadik had a kind of a traumatic 5 6 days of recovering we said what is happening he said i started loving this woman i said who is she she is a renu and we figure out one compositions we gave him i said when we shoot and interior is renu's love when you shoot outside is something else so the 32 buildings probably after the family nobody knows better than me i kind of scan with a macro lensing in all possibilities with every dust and is always like you know in my mind is like these women looking at me all the women are so beautiful i said what's the problem with us like you know, why we don't recognize them for in many reasons what a this is how it started and then it flows right and you did mention that there was a very close creative collaboration with the music mm-hmm. devuda and yes. with, yeah in the process can i have a coffee black coffee is <laughs> too much to ask i'm sorry since he's making a request i was wondering if it's possible for one more mic to be yeah. on stage one more mic is one, it, one more coffee possible? and one more mic <laughs> i mean a music director without uh, a mic uh, look uh, you can see people who how ambitious he is i mean this production total production you saw the entire credit end credit such big end credit definitely it's not for a documentary film okay uh to me it's always a uh today i am seeing it after one year almost after one year uh we have moved on as he said moved on i i would not forget the day i'll come to it the dramatic point of it it's it's for me you know the uh, anjum it's shakespearean tragedy the entire thing how i conceived and one very important thing that was a very dramatic thing that he was in germany and he is calling me i was in my studio in calcutta so i was in my studio and he said i want a song which is being loved by sheikh mujibur rahman he used to love that song amar sadhana mitilo ashana purilo shokoli phuraye jaye ma but amra jani ei gaan ta amra amra panalale golaye shunechi amra gaan ta we have heard this song in a very different way we have heard but he said that i want some kind of fakiri singing it should sound like like a ballad singer folk singer fakir singing the song so i was in the studio i was working completely different thing i was working for something else so i was over the over my phone and the way i do it the way i approach the stage so i said do you want this song to sing like amar shad namitilo ashana purilo shakoli phuraye jay ma amar mitilo ashana puri 
So I said, do you want uh, some singer? Do you want me to call some fakir singer to call and sing this? So he said, no, I don't know. I don't need the fakir singer. I want you to sing. So, but you know, you should never trust the director. I'm just <laughs> adding to that just quickly. See, this is very difficult job. Our editor is not here because we put her in trouble of two years of editing and not using anything of a loop. She is saying you are trying to write a book which is not an editor's job. So I said, you do, you get paid for all. Five minutes, loop, loop, loop. She said, where did you come? I said, I don't know, whatever. And at one point of time, she was so frustrated. I said, okay, let's get do one thing. Let's make a trailer to inspire all of us. She said, this is again a weird idea. You haven't finished the edit. I said, let's make one edit. So she, out of like her whim, she made one edit. And then this music happened. And we suddenly saw, we have a three minutes clips and I showed it to very one, two people and to my son, he said, amazing. And we first time realized we have the movie things. And we saw the trailer, we showed uh, Bobby Bhai, Bipu Bhai, they said, what is this? This is something, I'm, this is dramatic. They said like you're making a documentary, not movie. I said, yeah, it's a documentary. What I'm trying to say, when I gave him a brief, I said like, no, it's a documentary. Let's try to make music like a fiction. It's like fooling out of you. I think movie yes, making is a fabrication. Like, you know, I don't want to make you hostage, but there are like ticks, fabrications, a lot of things happen. So. Fabrication is the most important thing. And what he said is, uh, Anjum, uh, you are also a musician, you sing. So, uh, I always know you as that. So, Anjum, it's very difficult when somebody comes and say that forget all the chapters of your he didn't say, but it was kind of things that you, all your chapters that you have, you have sketched, painted all the chapters with Ritu Porno Ghosh, with Raincoat, with Choker Bali, with all these films, all that you have done. Forget that. He didn't say that, but it was there in the courts that you forget that you come, come with, negotiate with a new, fresh idea with the film. This is the first film we are doing. Not together, just but this is adding. the first film yeah. from Bangladesh that which is giving so much importance to the culmination of the entire thing and the small uh, storylets, small stories. Yes. Like in the Tungi Para Blues, Tungi Para, we lived for six months with Tungi Para Blues. Then he said, it is not Tungi Para Blues, it's the music. We have named Tungi Para Blues. We won't keep as Tungi Para Blues. But use the guitar, use the ektara as well. Use a huge orchestration. So it is not the music that I'm doing. Actually, I, uh, music is a parallel narrative. That's right. In fact, that's something that I noticed about the film, that the music is a presence right from the beginning. And uh, it's, it's constant. And then when there's silence, at moments there is silence, and that also really sort Quite of you notice silence. it. You really notice it. Very haunting it. silence. Yeah. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you as, um, as the director is that um, in this movie, there are lots of different textures and tonalities. You know, I mean, there is the very quiet, uh, very personal, interviews in the homes and the, when she's talking and remembering. And then there's all this very public footage and that too rather grainy, rather, you know, sort of dated kind of um, visuals available to you. Um, and, and then you have your own visuals of the countryside. And I think that the fact that you spend so much time, slow time appreciating the beauty of, of the country that the country for which uh, so much is being, you know, given up, sacrificed, and, and there's so much love being poured into it. I think that comes through in the film as well. And I was just asking you as a director, if you can talk a little, you did give a hint when you said, you want, don't want to just make a dry documentary. You want it to be like a work of fiction. It's almost like writing a book and you have all these chapters and you have the moods. So maybe you can talk a little bit about I think, that. I think that's the trick you know, when you're doing advertising, every project you try to impress your clients. Like, so when I came to these projects, I thought like you know, everybody was like surprised in my fraternity. Oh, he's supposed to make a movie. Why he's doing this? Oh, okay. There's like political things, probably like a lot of money, these and that. I said, this is amazing project. 
I can do something and surprise by myself. So I talked to my office. I said, this is happening. And I feel like this is going to be very difficult for me to sustain and retain. Because I don't have any idea. And there is a proximity problem with politicians in this country. If you go to streets, you talk about and there is like, you know, every alternative, like, you know, conversations will come. They'll, like, you know, give a gully to politicians, whatever. I feel like this whole, f like, you know, these flaws in our whole thinking systems and all. And I always feel like I've been working in Bombay and in, like, in abroad. So I have been working in projects and all. So I have, like, friends and all. I had these friends, like, you know, he was in New York. So he now based in uh, Bombay. So Holly Artisan happened. And we were like flying, doing ad business, like, you know, it's like very fancy, like, you, know, you do things, like, you know, you have the party, fly, I, fly, I fly. That point of time, I had this major terrible year, very tough time, being a normal, like, you know, human, a trouble time of not responding to my work, it's a fatigue, things comes. I started revisiting what I learned, whatever, different, 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 different things. And all these nuances came to me, I said, like, you know, can, there's an identity crisis. Like, you know, it's not so, what do you see uh, two daughters still for me? If you look at the music horizon, it has Tago, this. This is the first time I started seeing myself in words to this country. That's why if you feel like, I don't know how to swim, but probably in this room, it's very difficult to compete with me visiting the water body of this country. So when I we started writing in the office, like some lines and all, this whole idea of this complex delta we kept using, I think this is the most complex delta. We don't even know. What I realized, southern part of Bangladesh is beyond your imaginations. When I started visiting exactly the route Bangalore used to take to go his home. So that people don't use anymore. We made a very like, strange decision. We exactly want to follow them. So we hired a boat. We go by that. And it was next to next. And I, I had this British TOP. He's a Bangladeshi born, but he's a full British. And he had this lot of problems with like, you know, this hygiene, these, that, whatever. Like, you know, he was like terribly <laughs> suffering. And three days of sail, we only realized I'm from this country. I never seen this kind of rain bloody hell. I never saw this kind of rain. And like, there are like 100 kilometers proximity, you'll get a river. But when you get into like southern part of it, then I realize why Jibanandis came from here. Why all the strange filmmakers, poets, they are from that part. So there's a relations with water. And if you look at when she said like the hijal gaj, that hijal gaj is a tiny hijal gaj. But in one rainy morning, that hijal gaj, we shot for four hours. We used probably 30 seconds. That hijal gaj we shot and the entire crew was like spinned of silence. Because we made a, made a habit of like not talking and every single person listening certain kind of music in all headphones. So you put emotional rhythms of your thinking and the weather, these and that. So it was always a very brief shooting for Sadiq. He's a crazy guy. He's a painter. He's an anthropologist and he's a cinematographer. He has got three masters. So um, coming back to you, as uh, you've been listening to all the, the creative inputs on the team and how they thought about making this film and how closely were you involved with the whole process? Were you kind of seeing how it was developing and giving inputs throughout you and the other producer maybe? We tried to stay as involved as possible without getting in the way of uh, people's creative process because one of the reasons why we wanted him to do it was, I mean, people who's not from a very kind of active political background, I would say, maybe he'll, maybe he'll, maybe he'll contest that, yeah, or like, you know, I, I don't use that as a, I don't say it in a bad way, but anyway. So I thought, okay, when we met people, we'd worked on a previous project with him and I had spoken to Bipuha and I said like, Bipuha, I think this guy, if we can get him to spend some time with, with the prime minister, um, I feel like the effect that she would have on him, his sort of journey of seeing her as this you know, very strong leader, and then getting to know her up close and personal, I think this is the this is the journey we want the audience to go through. So so let's let's give it a shot. And uh, you know, people I thought he was he was on board as well. So primarily at the beginning, my role was really <laughs> really getting access. 
to her because she wasn't she wasn't always a willing participant in this project. So I think you'd notice that in one of the earliest scenes, she's carrying a, a child, yes, a very young child who's my son, who was during the course of the movie. Towards the end, you see him; he's grown up, and uh, because it, it took us about six years to do this. But what happened was we had a couple of failed attempts. So we'd spoken and we'd said, okay, let's just bring the film crew over. They can sit and they can wait and we'll try and opportunistically do this. Let's just do it once and then we'll see where it goes. And so there were a couple of days when we didn't manage to do it. And there was one day when we were just like, okay, no, we have to do it today. And I think, I think like people and all the, the rest of the crew, everybody was like, this is never going to happen. You're never going to be able to convince her. And so... I mean, I really put on my best nagging hat and I nagged her all day. I was like, you know, these guys are sitting here. Please, 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 please. And we started from the morning and then we ended up in the afternoon. And I, I felt like I had made a breakthrough. I was like, you know, she was probably just tired of me. And she, you know, she was probably thinking, let me just get this over and done with. But then she had, a, she had a last stand and she said, well, you know, I just put your son to sleep. And if I put him down now and go in front of the cameras, he's going to wake up. I said, well, take him. She's like, what? I was like, yeah, take him. Take him. And she's like, then he's going to be on camera. You don't want that. I know you're very private about your children. I'm like, it's fine. Just take him. And I think, I, I think that works. So then she went and then she sat in front of the camera. And you can see at one point, little Caius is trying to escape from this shooting. He wakes up and he's like, you know, what's, what's going on? But what... Piplu Bhai and Shaun, who's not here, he was involved in the project as well. What they did was in that, they had a really, they had a very small window of opportunity to build up a relationship with her and get her to sort of feel comfortable with them and trust them. And they did it remarkably. So I think Absolutely. we spent, what, like six hours trying to convince her. But then once you got her on tape... You roll for like three hours without I without she, end, didn't you? I think she has this like, oh, I can't do this. Like, and then you have to be like really a playful and kind of very intense and passionate. And if she sees, then then she got into things. So what happened over the five years of time? I kept asking the same questions many times, but she always, you know, why are you asking this? You ask me in Tungipara. I said that day that emotion was not right. By the time we grew up with the relations, you know, like you know, because on the very first day I, I met her, I said, oh wow, I like you are Bangabandhu's daughter. So I would rather call you up. I cannot call, like I'm a filmmaker. I cannot call you prime ministers every time. So let's shoot. Okay, what's your question? Okay, we start question. Now, because of I know the like history and this is like favorite subject, so it's, we kept, uh, it's like nice talk. Yeah. And it was like one nice talk. And then very fast day, I realized, okay, I need to pitch. So when you shoot to the big bodies, like you, know, you need to pitch next, what? Oh, I, I want you to go to the 32. No, oh, no, no, that's not possible. On the very first day. Imagine three and a half years later, she agreed on a Friday. For, on a Friday, four in the morning, and this guy, Sadiq, said the entire building he wants to smoke down. And SSF said, okay, okay, yeah. So by then, they know these guys are serious. And we end up, I was smoking, and this one military guy came, hey, man, by the way, how are you? I said, nice, nice. Was it, you have any idea? We deployed almost like 1,100 security today for you. I said, because you don't see them. I said, this is that serious. Moses, she's a prime minister. I said, okay, I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> we asked for it. That day, and me and Sadiq, I said, that day, Sadiq look at, brother, this is too much. <laughs> we talked about us. Entire building, we, they allowed us everything. The one scene, she's coming from the stairs. He won these like in a different kind of contrast. He loved that kind of haze. This is, camera is rolling, he's like almost on the last, she's coming, she's like, can we add on a little smoke, man? I said, security guy is not allowed. So this is kind of the intensity you put in. Because uh, in my team and also myself, we never had any preoccupations about making a movie on Chekhasina, what will happen, nothing, whatever. I found it like, this amazing opportunity, I should do it, I am a filmmaker, I should move on, like, I should make a movie. So whenever we pitch, like, you know, it comes on Hasina, okay, it's my friends, fraternity, intellectual, oh, you make a movie on check, you know. I said, there's a sense of rejection. Okay, I said, it's, it's only 72 minutes, you watch it, please. There are like a lot many things to watch. You can listen to the music, these and that. This is, is still the pitch. I think so, reaching here is metaphorically, for me, I'm, we are minority with the movie. I think this is a country we live in, like there are like so many sections, so many narratives. But I really 
tired of all this narrative. Like, we should grow up. We should start celebrating things. And like, you know, narrative, anti-narratives and all. I felt like this is an amazing opportunity to put a shine on our leaders. So I, I work in Bombay. Like when you want to ever go to a shop, oh, they're like, oh, this and that. Muhammad Ali Zinna. I said, like, you know, we have no leader. Have a like, nice book in the showcasings and all. Are we are so inferior of our identities and all. I think deep down, we probably need to, it's very subjective, need to agree on the fact that we have this inferiority complex of not showing our things, a leader, whoever. I'm saying, if you look at 32's, all these pictures, first things attracted me, how beautiful this guy. Even in that structures, in like, please and this, how beautiful, how fashionable. But we never thought that's a fashion. We yeah. never thought that women's the way they used to wear sorry, those are the things started connecting as I started connecting my countries. Right. So if okay. you see the usage of music, the tag or lal on everything is infused to give you a sense of, of what the country. Is. Yeah. yeah. Like in my office, we have this whole idea of like, you know, if it is valuable, it's like not beyond 90s. Like you know, there's like all these little, little things we practice. I think this like whole amazing time of our inceptions of this country coming out of a linguistic emotion. I think this is the most amazing things happen in the history of these things about. Right. So for me making this documentary, if I go back, I think I would rather write a book which is I'm not capable. Actually in ideal scenario, I should write a book to tell what drive me to make the documentary. Make the film. I think you yeah. should, we've been talking about it, right? <laughs> Um, well, but I have to say just quickly here that like my interventions weren't always, you know, that helpful. And it's a good thing that one of the things that attracted us to people for this project was we knew that he would stick to his guns and he would deliver something that that he felt was true to, to himself. And so he talked a lot about the music from the beginning. And I love music as well, but I was like, but this is a documentary. Like, why, why do you keep on going on about the music? How can the music play a key role in this? This is the prime minister and she's talking about her life and it's an emotional tale. And he was just like, he's like, trust me, the music is gonna be very, very important. And, and we, we thought, okay, yes, we have to trust I think I people still on carry, this. And I'm glad we did. So uh, I think still I carry the 10 different kinds of playlists all over it, different day. So the first norms in the shoot. In three months, we realized we cannot move with a huge team. The first decisions me and Sadiq took, let's shoot the entire things with one lens. So you have one lens, you have one card. And we hired people who don't have any like, you know, this whole phobia of we, are, we need to do it fast and fast. So we had, we, for, for example, I, I hired the best of the associate. We shot one month, we realized these guys like pushing us in a different directions to make us efficient. First things we said, like, you know, sorry, brother, you're not working with us. The best body working for 10 years. And then I occupied the most volatile, like, you know, this poetic, poet kind of one associate. He has no sense of anything. He said, okay, cool. <laughs> these, okay, we are not shooting today. Yeah, we are not shooting today. <laughs> we are doing these. Okay, we'll take five hours. Okay, we'll wait. <laughs> so, I mean, this is how. Yeah. Now, prop, the good part was like, you know, we, in my office, we took a decision. It's going to be a technically theoretical for me. But I kind of are very methodical. Like, you know, it's like a method actress. So, I separated my small office with a small team. Idea is like they should not work in ads. But the back office, we have another director, so they're kind of sustained. Right. So two years, I had separations with my office, not knowing them, not showing them. So 15 people, out of 20 people, five people, we are making a movie. Another 15 people, they probably first started seeing three years and all. But we never showed them for any opinion. Right. We showed them with the audience and like, okay, watch it. Okay, bye. So, so we had this like full ambitious like you know this uh, energy and everything and I was blessed by these two guy though they were like in a talk very apprehensive for example they meeting so it's like it looks like very frustrating but by then I started getting the pattern so like three days later you get a call okay go ahead okay. but that passion is like right right okay um, I think it would be nice to get some reactions and questions from the audience now. And particularly yeah. if there's anything yes. more you want to ask any of them in particular that I haven't uh, done. So I see lots of hands going up here. 
uh, that hand one here and one here. One here, then the, the one next to where you're standing. First is, yeah. Hello, Hello I'm Mahdi. My question will be for people who uh, I have friends here who had uh, doubts from the very beginning that this will be a political propaganda and this will be nothing else. Uh, as a director, did you think that you have, uh, you were able to differentiate between the person, Sheikh Hasina, and the Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, and what were the responses and did you like it? I think this movie will take time. I, I think one thing is we are very sure, me and Devojuti, this movie, for example, probably I want to watch this movie 30 years later with my son and whoever and watching these and we realize what we made. I think a lot of interpretations I made this, which is very subjective, is very my own things and all, but I try to understand these whole things. Imagine on the very time of making, I was reading completely opposite literatures, not try to understand the family, because then I know. For example, one person like really inspired me, Professor Razak's two things. Like he said, this country came out of this linguistic uh, emotion. Water is really important. And he said, Chashimuddin will come forever. We studied a lot of poetry. If you look at Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, forget about anything. You will not get the second characters in the history of that. For, for me, as I'm, I'm a filmmaker, I don't want to put a scan on all these, these and that. I want to see, he's a poet for me. So, and that, now these two daughter, if you look at their structures in life, not everyone in this room has a story. I said, no, there's an intern, he's a flat, don't get him. He's a flat, he doesn't have any story. I mean, what is the story? Sheikh Hasina I met, like, you know, it's beyond a point, like, you know, I'm that person, I have a degree of separation I think never met after release and everything. We don't communicate. But there's this sense of strange, a destined strong women that attracted me. That is beyond your narrations about her, whoever is her politics. It is not Irrespective. Enough, yeah. If you want me to make a movie on her politics, probably I'll make it 20 years later. And that will cost you something bomb. <laughs> that will not be a documentary. So I'm just a very funny incident. So I was like uh, released. Sham Banigal one day just got a call. I said, who is this? Sham Banigal people. I saw your documentary. So I liked it. Are you coming to Bombay? I said, I'm saying coming to Bombay for some post. So he invited me in office. We went to Bombay Gym Khana. He's a nice guy, baritone. Bittu Khan, what do you think? These projects I'm doing. I said, sir, I made sure your research has done. And out of 10, nine is like, it's a predictable, it's very difficult to make a movie on Bongo Bondo. For example, this is that interesting structure. So when people look at oh, these two daughters, there is a kind of a escape, no. Is that interpretations I made, I thought was the most amazing. Yeah. Is that this archetype, I felt amazing, universal. Okay. Okay, thanks. Next question was here. And after that, okay, this side, the last lady in the row, and then that one. I think that's... Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Arnab Chandu from Dhaka University. Uh, first of all, it seems to me that it's a teamwork. So thank you all. But I have my few questions uh, to the director. And obviously, I'm happy to see Nuzul Hamid Bipubhai from the same college, Dhaka Residential Model College. Uh, so my question is that uh, I think uh, you captured the real moment when Sheikh Hasina was like uh, uh, waiting to uh, stand on the van and say, Ami Bhanel Chotte Pari, to Dekho To. So you actually captured the real character of Sheikh Hasina, which is a very positive thing. And thanks to the music director, uh, the way you assign the music, even the composition, everything was really up to What's the What's your question? But please? my question is, uh, that's the major question, because I studied anthropology, so my question is to you that, how do you start that speaking to Prime Minister that upper? You started with Appa and you just started making conversation with her and you reached to the peak point. So what was your journey uh, getting into the interview? I, I, don't, I don't, actually, I really tired of answering all these, like, you know, how she is, all these, that, whatever, that's not the question. I mean, just, it's, I'm a director. If I'm capable <laughs> of, like, you know, making a moment or the moment seizing me, that's how I capture, that's it. It's not a big deal. I think anybody like meeting Sheikh Hasina, she's another normal human being. I think she's the most 
easily talkable person who can look at you itma juta fita ta akhun laga de pore jabo to so it's just like that i like now what are you doing here i'm just uh, i have very personal i'm sorry sorry so i was like can you do one thing for me can you have like little chai with muri i i thought because i did research with all these old people they take care of the house and all so the intensity of things when you show the like an honesty that's it basically I'll say that thank that's what happened thank you so much thank you i mean thank this you. is nothing to glorious and all i made this film for myself honestly and honestly i would be happy people go home and they make their interpretations they write things and all i'm sure almost we are finishing because i was telling him like you no know, i think even after so many spares and all we are like traveling eight festivals this and that why i felt bad for these things for example i'm not it's, it's a very funny occasion last year we were almost thinking to give it like to uh, let first to start with i was pitching i said like boy was amazing audience so we should he said no it should be a public theater then i agreed his point as a producer then manto came i also came to see and all imagine the right after manto i saw at least three prominent editor of this country they had a cheese like you no know, nandita das for like one teachers and all you can't even show a single piece of writing to justify my degree of understanding of this or challenging the cover somewhere we like losing it like you know, this is this is the identity crisis of things okay. about so uh, this is the beginning i want people to be more I, I ambitious i think this is what he said uh, to me you know uh, being there in india as it said india uh, in other part of bengal anjum this is the thing how i was born you know 71 came to us like you know we all used to say that there is going to be a free country and after that all these things happened 75 so we have grown with all these things but as it said that not be sentimental how you can emote and you can tell a story maybe not is not one story there there are many stories you all can create your stories out of one film as such important film should be there it should be showcased brilliantly and there should much beyond the elitist attitude towards films people who have seen film but for a important handshake they come to the director or they come to bobby and say uh, hello you have made a film do you have seen the film you haven't seen the film <laughs> so that is a kind of thing so he was talking Actually, to me it is a kind of a frustration for filmmaker for him for a music composer as well i think you know i i have done i think i have a volume of works but i think it is the most important the most important to work of mine it's mine i am so much there not my music i am so much there my emotion my passion my angst oh, so much there so and your voice palpable. Vibhuta. and your voice also and my I, voice. i think i think this we is have a question i think here. the most amazing things happened because these are uh, four people friendship so on the very first day of premiere we were like uh, returning bonani in the car and navneeta she is like a very over protective about the us and the film she is like our teacher and she said one thing is so melancholic and so she for making the sufferings and if you think making a movie on shekh hasina is like easy whatever every movie if you believe in is the sufferings i suffered at that's my job she said they would have the best things happened when we are like exiting today it will never happen to us that much we might get an oscar later doesn't matter but on that very moment she professional in a car that night we were like we visited her we sang with her all these things happened we we'll later tell you to yeah we don't have yeah. those, we have those pictures and you have a book ago. to write remember that so that <laughs> moment i believed in like you no know, this friendship is over then we realize oh we made something we like now it's up to you guys yeah we have a question from the lady in there um, uh, we are taking this opportunity to thank the whole team for making such a vital movie for the for generations later generations to watch and maybe know something of our history My question is uh firstly to want to Bobby uh do you feel any pressure on being the grandson of such a legendary leader as Bongo Bondhu and another question is to Pipro Khan do you think that you could make a next movie on uh, this another one on the life uh of Bongo Bondhu 
that would be, um, of course, I think many people would like to know, could that be made? Thank you. So that's two questions. You go first. Pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Um, no, I, I wouldn't say I feel any pressure. I think in the, in the film you see there's a point where the Prime Minister says, we don't overburden our children with stories of grief or sadness. And it's, and it's true. Um, we grew up and from a very young age, I knew about 15th August and the events and all of that. But we were kind of told about it as a, this is your life and that's just the way it is. It, it, never, it never wore us down. And in the same way, I'm immensely proud, of course, of being related to, to Bongo Wanda, of him being my grandfather. But I don't feel any pressure. I think it's just, it's just a joy to have any kind of connection to a person like this. And in many ways, um, one of the reasons why we, I wanted to do this as well is I never met my grandfather, people my age, you know, they've only read about him or even when they were in school, they didn't even get to read about him. They, they sort of got introduced to him later. But for me, the person I saw very closely was, was the prime minister, my aunt. And I mean, she's, I am obviously biased, but she's one of the most remarkable people I've ever come across or even read about or even seen on television. And I just wanted to give people a little glimpse into this personality of hers and, and to see, to see the journey that she's had. So, you know, now you see the Prime Minister up there and she has a lot of achievements. She has, she has opponents and detractors and people might criticize some of the decisions she's made and all that. But it, it was that, that journey, like, you know, you don't get there overnight. And it's not dissimilar to the journey that my grandfather had as well. We had a earlier session here, which was really interesting. And it was about where he came from. You know, he, he didn't go to any posh schools or he didn't go to Oxford or he didn't go and study law abroad. He, he came from Gopal Ganj. But then he had this journey and he became Bongo Bandhu. So um, I think for me, it was, it was just this, trying to, trying to get this message across and give people a little glimpse into the Prime Minister's jersey and journey. And I feel immensely privileged to be related to both of them. No, no pressure felt <laughs> over that. I think the next question is very obvious. It's very subjective. I don't think, it's just very subjective. I, I, I am a person which if I don't, having a kind of a internal crisis or whatsoever, if I don't live on something, I, I don't tend to make things. I, for my livings, I make acts. Now, I think for Bongo Bandhu making a movie is a extremely a very tough component. I think probably we are not still ready. It's very personal, like as in like I'm saying if you ask me to make a movie on Bongo Bandhu and the kind of audacity I'll show that probably still not might not might sound stupid, like you know. So I should not rather shouldn't do it right like, now. No. Oh, yeah, I mean it might happen, and my son might. Make it somewhere else, but <laughs> it should happen. Yeah. It sh movie should not be ordered. Line. It should happen. This yeah. happened. Yeah. This is on the very first day. We didn't know anything about. It. That's the beauty of it. One year later, some ten minutes clips, one edit, just to tell him there is a potential. I said that, and this fourteen pages of one writing, which is for anybody, is like what is this? I mean, you don't. I mean, it's a treatment note. You can respect it because I wrote it, but still, you don't get the films right. Yeah. I just want to add here because this is one of the other things we faced when we kept on trying to get access. My aunt kept on saying, where's your script? You guys have been shooting this for five years. What are you doing? Like, where's the script? I'm like, there, there is no script. She's like, what do you mean there's no script? I said, you're the script, right? Your life is the script and it's coming out of your mouth and my mother's mouth and that's the script. And she was just like, I don't know how you guys are doing this without a script. Like, you know, everything has a script. So, I mean, it, but, but I felt like that, that kind of helped. Sort of. And I, I, but I one thing I can tell, I think if we want to really make a movie on Bongo Bandhu, that has to be someone from this side. It's very difficult to understand our nuances and yes, our yes, drama. That's, that's very, very important. I think at this point of time, I take the enough, like, you know, I'm just, I'm that guy. I'm just like calling Barsil and like, I want to have like Dal Bhata. Like, how do I? So I'm just, I live on that. I saw the beauty of this country, the countryside, and it's amazing people. This is amazing people, it's beyond Dhaka. You don't see them if you don't really meet them. Right. And once you see that, and then once you see the world, I think the characters of all these southern people, like you know, there's a beat, uh, 
jibunand so that level that, of abstraction maybe that's your next movie of passion oh, what the, music, like, you know, the music and the landscape imagine together. like you know who like there are like 10 characters like that they're ready and they hit the notes that's why I, we need to understand these whole educated urban people somewhere down their mathematics is completely opposite to conquer the things like this like sheik right. mujibur rahman coming from nowhere and made a country possible which was not in theoretically possible now you are going to celebrate in 50 years to understand that essence i think the essence of joy bangla is so fascinating for me i think the now is another just word yeah but i think this is amazing if i could make a for example like you know essence on joy bangla itself abstractions of 90 minutes i would rather do that like you know right yeah okay uh, we had one hand up there and then we've got a lady in the first row and we'll have to see how time goes and maybe the one last question mm-hmm. after that well uh, on the film um, i would say that it was uh, i would like to congratulate the team for me it was counter intuitive having had the fortune the very good fortune of knowing up close the members of the family when i went to went to watch the film i had an idea in my mind and the film tried and to a very large extent succeeded in bringing out the persona of the honorable prime minister and her sister to to that extent of course it is by no means uh, a work which can be taken lightly and wasn't so i think that aspect is there but my short question i wasn't going to ask any question just a thought which was a carry over from the last session when shashi tharoor was speaking perhaps this dynamic team may consider making a film on young bangabandhu you know i just give you one example uh when bangabandhu was barely 20 maybe 21 and an ardent leader of the nikhil bongo muslim chhatra league these are all matters of record all bengal muslim students league which was an organ which was an extension of the muslim league these young leaders inspired by bangabandhu in one movement momentous movement removal of the holwell movement holwell monument from the face of calcutta this was a call given by netaji subhash chandra and the muslim league ministry of fazl haq was in a they didn't want to immediately go in for it because they wanted to keep their british masters that was a tactical move of course they were in principle also but this time that leadership went out and today there is no holwell monument because of the students of baker hostel led by the young dynamic force of which a key person was young sheikh mujib of 2021 this is just to sir once again if you will allow me to renew my congratulations you have done a wonderful job since the the topic has been floated about making a film of bangabandhu which is of course of a such such certainly a very magnum proportion you may <laughs> consider uh, looking at the pro- uh, prospect of making a young bangabandhu film thank you thank you yeah, you've got two projects now not to mention the one that i suggested which is doing the landscape and the music all right yes uh, we had a question in the first row thank you for your comments sir uh, assalamu alaikum uh, i am alisha pradhan i am from dhaka um, i have a intomitable spirit of pro liberation but i say politically i am non aligned but deeply encouraged and inspired by prime minister sheikh hasina i think which is why i was able to launch a television 3 months ago which is asia's first tv for women's well being and needless to say how much we as a nation is inspired by her leadership more as a women so my question to people bhai is that though you have said and mentioned it was just another project of course you did it uh from your directorial perspective but i think uh we do not look at you anymore like that you have a higher responsibility so i think my fellow ladies has already asked you the question about bangabandhu movie but my question to you how you see yourself as a director and in let's say next 3 years do you see there would be changes because you have directed that movie and one question to uh bobby bhai would be that uh this was a huge project a tale of sheikh hasina and let me repeat my heartiest felicitation again we are deeply moved by this movie but there are people like us as small as young maybe a group if we would also like to capture the essence of hpm sheikh hasina 
how easy or difficult it would be for us to get the access. Thank you. And my television is called Hernet TV, which is Asia's fast TV on women's well-being. And we are working for children, third gender, and women. Thank you. I think I like the disruption, so I, I always try to surprise myself, my team. I work with a very intense, close group, and I work for few people, and that I like about, I think all these communications, all these conversations, they probably get half of answers. They know all these answers we talk about. We talk like an adrenal rush, and all these kids in my office, and some friends, inspirations and all. I think there should not be any, I have a very, like, I might do a thriller actually next year, it's a dysfunctional drama on the crisis of this city and completely dark. I mean, so that's how it can be. I'm like, you know. Okay. So you have a diverse plan. I, I'm like, I mean, this is not the age you make 37 movies like Shatyajit Rai. I think people don't watch movie anymore. For example, this is categorically, uh, we know, Arjun knows like, you know, this art and culture is dead. That's why in my iPod, there is no music beyond 90s. Of course, we celebrate different kind of music, but we have this dignity in my office. We don't play any music in the morning. There is a sense of directions, even the small, like, this is the pride, like, you know. So at this point of time, if I want to make a movie, like, probably I'll make five movies in, like, my life. I mean, so, there's no hurry, actually. We have enough time. And your question? Um, it would be great if, if you wanted to do something on the Prime Minister as well. Uh, I think I've used up all my sort of goodwill in nagging her and getting access to more cameras. But on a more serious note, one of the reasons why we wanted to do this as well was to try and present an alternative way of talking about history. Not only, not only my grandfather and mine, there, there are many, many more heroes who are there in the story of Bangladesh's independence and, and the way Bangladesh is going now. And we just wanted to say that, you know, we just wanted to show an example as well of like, you can do it in a different way. I feel like um, we can break out from some of the more traditional methods, keeping it very serious. And, um, you know, Biplu Bhai, the way he approached this project, even people who are huge supporters of the prime minister and the family, they didn't always like it. They don't like this thing. Like one of, it's quite a funny thing, but like one of the first comments I got after we did the premiere was, but you guys didn't show the pot the bridge in there. And I said, yes, but this is, this is not about that. And it, it goes back to that question we had about, would it be seen as propaganda? And actually this was another thing that we really worried about is the film was delayed by a few months and then it came out just before the elections. And we were worried because the people that we actually made it for, like the young generation, the younger generation, they might be put off by it. And even, even people I know, you know, we had conversations, they'd be like, oh yeah, you made this film before the elections. And we're like, why don't you just go watch it first? And then tell us, tell us what you think. So I hope this, what People Bahai has created will inspire people more to look at different ways of storytelling. You know, just because they're historical leaders or they're prime ministers doesn't mean that we always have to give it that very formal, very officious, slightly boring treatment. We can do it in a more accessible way. I think uh, I just, I don't I think in my, sh like, you know, this little experience in life, when people say I'm not politically aligned, that is the biggest lie I can tell you. This is the country and like from morning to night, every single person is from May to end, so politically conscious. They're so serious. Everybody's political in this country. Then when we talk about this, these and all, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm very neutral. Then you made a movie on Hasin and then oh, what's the problem? So I made a movie, that's it. You watch it, watch it, whatever. And the way we see our leaders, that is one point, like I spent five years with her. I think what they like, they are, they are what we think. There is a sense of like, you know, this glorifying all these things is so tiring. So I know all these things and all. So in my office, like we shot with the prime minister, there are like so many of these and that all these kids, they're, they're, they're so cool. Dude. Okay, we shot with the prime minister. There's, I mean, it's work. We are doing an ad. I think we need to grow up. Like, you know, we are like a developing country, 50 years old. We are with the hegemony of like one newspaper, these, one person, these. Now it's talking about patronizations. Do we have guts to make some basic things right? Forget about making a movie on Bongo Bandhu. We have like this range of filthy rich people in this country. They don't have a single penny ready to spend creating some amazing things. Because of that calculation comes, then I said, oh, you are really poor. Okay, don't come to me. 
If you want to make a, I, I want to make a documentary on Joshua Uddin. Will he spend 10 crore? Not. Somebody will spend in Spain, he will spend 10 crore. This is where we need to take a big leap. This guy had no idea what I have, I'm going to ask for, whatever. It's not monetary, for, like in a, in, as a matter of of the time, of the way I want to exercise and all. And Bipu Bhai and Bobby Bhai, knowing my integrity or whatever, this short span of little friendship, no sting attached, when they called, they knew one thing, if he's not liking it, he's not driving it, he'll not do it, that's it. So I think we need more and more this kind of people. Honesty, okay. like that's it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, we have run out of time. So that was yes. the last question we were able to take. And um, yes, so we will have to bring this conversation to a close. I'd like to thank once again uh, the panelists on stage. Thank you very much for being part of this conversation. Thank you for the film and for putting so much of your lives and yourselves into the film. Yeah. Oh, we have to end with another song. Da, 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 You all know this song, na? Da, 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 And uh, we have blended. Purano shayidi nir kotha. Hai o shay chukhe dekha. Nir kotha. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. You actually, you all have made this film. We have initiated, you should start this film from today itself. Thank you.